here are the links that are for everything that you're going to need to download. I already have them up here. I'll have them down in the description below. I pulled them up here. The first one is going to be the non-sucking service manager. This is in order to actually get the software is to run as a service when window or the computer starts instead of having you to start it manually once you logged in. Next one is going to be two tone finder. This one will be used in order to find the frequency of your page tones. Sometimes these are unknown, other times you can get these from dispatch so you'll be able to get them into the systems and used appropriately. You'll use two tone detect that'll actually listen for the tones that you found and then do different actions depending on how it's configured once it identifies that a tone has been received. And then the scanner cast radio. This is for broadcasting your radio frequency over broadcastify.com or any other service that might be set up to allow your pages to be listened to by the general public. Okay, now that everything's downloaded, we can start using it in order to find our setup. First thing you're going to want to do is extract the two-tone finder. And then open that up and run the program. You can run either debug or regular, it doesn't really matter here, it's just whether that console window pops up. Now, if you have multiple audio inputs, you're going to have to select which audio input you're using here. For the most part, it should pop up with the default that is already being used on your system. Depending on the volume coming into your microphone port, you might have to adjust the squelch level in order for it to actually trigger and capture the frequency. You'll be able to see the input level on the screen, so you should be able to put the squelch just above that so that it's able to capture it. Now when I play a test audio here, you'll actually see that it comes through and shows the tone frequency there. So that's the number you're going to need in order to get this information. So like up at the top here, this the frequency I'm looking at here is 586. So now that we have that frequency, we can move on to the next step. The next step is actually to prepare us in order to actually set up all of the services once we're fully up and running. So we're going to want to extract the non-sucking service manager, go into it, find the appropriate version for you, and you'll actually copy this out, and then you'll go and put it inside of the System32 folder. So Windows, or C Windows, System32, get down into the folder there and copy it in. This way it's a service that, or a command you'll actually be able to run from the command line. So that's all that it takes in order to set up the non-sucking service manager. The next step is to set up your scanner cast. Okay, now we'll be able to go ahead and set up our scanner cast in order to broadcast to Broadcastify. Now you're going to end up needing an account on Broadcastify, and then once you do that, you'll be able to apply for doing an audio broadcast. Once you get to that point, you'll end up going into your feed, and you'll find a technicals tab. That'll end up showing the server, the port, and all of the information like that. Now. The big thing is here is there's a download link for the scanner cast. I'm going to provide the link directly down below so you'll be able to get that downloaded and installed prior to necessarily needing this set up. But you will need one in order to actually broadcast. What we're going to do is extract the files here. This will actually be where the software is ran from. So wherever you put this is going to be where it ends up executing from. Now it's okay if it stays in the downloads. I personally prefer to move it over to the C folder and also relabel it so it actually is a little more legible. So once you're in here, you're going to manually start the program once. It'll open up here. Now this is where if you have your Broadcastify login information, the Software references it as radio reference. That's the old site before they rebranded as Broadcastify. So what you'll do is you'll put in your information here. And 
you'll actually log in to Broadcastify. This will end up pulling in the configuration. It'll sh also show multiple feeds. So if you have multiple feeds under your account, you'll be able to use that here. Here you'll also end up picking up the appropriate audio input again. So you're going to want to make sure that you pick the same one that you have your scanner plugged into. Now, depending on which what you have hooked up to your system, there's some different scanner model options up here. Some of them will provide alpha tagging and stuff like that. For the most part, if you just have a general basic scanner hooked up, you're going to end up picking audio only for no tag support. So there's some other tabs up here. There's status. You can actually see if it's connected and working appropriately. So you can hit start broadcast. It'll end up updating it and it'll show that it's running. And there at that point, you can see that it's sending OK. So in theory, we should be online now when we go back to our feed. Now it does take a little while to update, so don't expect it to show up right away. But you can leave that running for the time being just to make sure that it does eventually go online. So now that we have two-tone finder to identify our frequency completed, we have Not Sucking Service Manager installed, we now have Scanner Cast running. The next step is to set up the two-tone detect. So we'll extract those files here. Again, this will end up being the folder that the program actually becomes run out of. So you can actually open up the first one and then copy the next one out to wherever you want that to be ran from. Like I just copy it into the C drive again, just so that it's there. Switch it to a generic name. Now this is the current version that's out there. There might be updated versions by the time you're looking at this. So you might actually have to contact I'm Responding who purchase rights to Two-Tone Detect in order to get the latest download. So once in here, there's a few files you need to be aware of. There's the config, which is the general Two-Tone Detect configuration. Then there's also the tones. Now, if you open these, they have general settings in here that can be edited as text files. They also have a web GUI that they've started using for configuration files as well. So right in here, it'll have a default set up in here. You can ignore most of this to begin with. And then the preference is actually that you would go and use the web interface in order to actually update this configuration. So once you get it started here, I suggest at least these initial times using a debug, just so you can, if there are errors, you can actually see what the errors are. But down here, you can actually have a new little taskbar icon, so you can actually open the two tech GUI. That'll open a web page that actually points at your local system here. Now here is where you will start configuring it a lot, like the information you had out of the two tone finder. So again, you'll pick your input device, you pick your output device, and you'll be able to set your squelch. Once you've done that, the you can go into edit the config info. This will be where you provide a lot of information in order to do various different aspects. The big thing being is the email setup, and then recording settings. Now, if you have an FTP server that you upload all of your recordings to or wish to, you'd be able to set all of that stuff up here as well. So there are additional options that they have. I'm not going to go into detail on them because if you want to, you can look at the documentation and get them going there at your own pace. Now, once you finish setting up all of the information in here between the tone info and the config info, you can go ahead and do a test page. Now, I have a copy of one of our test pages already set up on another computer. I'll just be playing it from that. As you can see, it triggers, it has 586.2 hertz. You can see that it was actually triggered up above. 
and now it's done with the page so it's actually going through its timeout. Now you're going to want to make sure to set it to where it stops recording it after a while and also has a timeout between before it'll trigger again. Some departments have back-to-back -back pages as their initial page. So you're not going to want it to capture both of them and send them both out. You're also going to be able to notice that over here in this window, it'll actually show that the page is received, that it sent it, and all the timestamps that are associated with that as well. So now that those programs are set up, the next step is to set them up as a service so that they will start on computer boot instead of having you to log in and start the programs manually. So in order to do that, you're going to go and start up a commandment prompt. You're going to want to do this as an administrator so that you're able to actually install the service as you might not have rights outside of being an administrator. So what you're going to do is do an SSM for not sucking service manager, install, and the service name. So like in this case, I'm going to do scanner cast first. You'll end up running that and it'll pop up with this window. Now the one thing you're going to want to know is that you're not going to want this to be broadcasting at the time when you actually set up the service, because once you start the service, it will turn it on. Um, you're going to want to make sure under advanced that it is starting minimized, starting broadcast when it starts, and that you minimize it to the tray. So just make sure under advanced that these three settings are set. And then at that point, you can close out this program. Now, the reason I had said that you're going to want to make sure that you're in a spot where you want the program ran when you extract them is it will actually go and find or go and point at the program path right here so c scanner cast scanner cast.exe this is so that it actually knows where to start the program from and it'll start it just like any other windows service now you can set some other things like the display name scanner cast you can set a description however you want to do this. Now you should have it as automatic. I usually set it to automatic delayed so that it can make sure that other programs start, that your network cards are working, that your sound cards are online, everything like that. Most of the other stuff here you're not going to have to worry about. You can have look into these different options if you want, but for the most part the default should work for, any, for everything. Once you hit install, it'll say that it was installed successfully. If you go and open up services, you can scroll down and it should show up in here. Now it's not going to start it initially off the get-go, so you're going to want to start it at that point. And then your scanner cache should be online anytime and as long as that computer's online, whether somebody logs in initially after a restart or not. Now we're going to do the same thing with two-tone detect. Again, make sure that you go in here, close everything down. Make sure that that's shut. Since you close the console window, since it was in DMUG, that will actually stop the software. So once that's good to go, you'll go back in here. You'll do the same thing as before. Go into your two-tone detect folder, select the non-debug version. Again, I prefer to do delayed, then install service. Now if you scroll down, you might have to do a refresh in order to get to show up, but then it should be right there. You'll have to start it again, just like the other one. Now I'm not going to go into any of the specifics of it for setting this up for I'm responding. There are a lot of comp or departments starting to use that instead of using email, it's just so it shows up in their mobile app. But I might end up doing that in a future video and releasing the information on that. It is a fairly straightforward setup. They do have some pretty good guides. So that should be able to be figured out by anybody that's got this far in setting things up. If you have any questions or concerns, comments, let me know in the comments below. I'll try and answer them as quick as I can, and I'll update the video if necessary if there's something that's not working.
Thank you.